Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur podcast. Today I am joined by Nicole Coustier and we are talking all about decision making and the management of emotions within that and all of the things. So Nicole, welcome into the podcast. Thank you so much. It's so great to be here, Amy. I'm so thankful for you taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to our listeners today. So before we dive in, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, who you are and what you do? Absolutely. So I am actually a decision coach. So I specialize in high stakes, high consequence decision making. And I wasn't always a decision coach. I uh, spent many, many years as a consultant traveling around the country, getting new medical technologies covered by insurance companies. I did the corporate thing for a long time. And then the company that I helped build got acquired. My daughter was three at the time. I was like, you know what? I don't want to take yet another contract and spend 50% of my time on the road. What could I do that would give me the flexibility, that would bring in the income, that could help me create the life that I wanted? And I decided coaching was the way to go. And so what I specialize in is actually helping people manage the tumultuous emotion around making high stakes, super important decisions, whether it's work, life, family, all of those things. What I found is it really boils down to how you feel and managing how you feel to get yourself over the hump and into a decision that you're happy with. Yeah, that is amazing because I feel like as moms, we are making so many little decisions every single day that when it comes time for a big decision, we just, we don't even know how to manage those emotions. So how do we navigate that? Can you share some strategies with us? Absolutely. Decision fatigue is real, a hundred percent. And you know, what I hear a lot of people talking about are initially when they come to me is the thought and the feeling is, I don't know what to do. I don't know. And people are worried that there is one right decision and everything else must be terribly, terribly wrong. Some version of wrong. And what I try to work through with my clients is, gee, what if that weren't the case? What if there wasn't one right decision? What if you could take a choice and it's on a spectrum of poor to best and you're never going to pick the poor decision. We're just not built that way as humans. Of course, we are going to try to make the best decision that we can and to really embrace that, that it is best, that with new information, you're not tied down, right? You can actually adjust and modify and scale up, scale back. It's it's not necessarily set in stone. And so a lot of the techniques that I use is to help people get out of black and white thinking, get out of catastrophe thinking, open themselves up to their own expertise and their own wisdom and build confidence. How do you build confidence? Well, it really has to do with how you interpret your situation and the thoughts that you're bringing into the decision. And that'll help you manage the rest of it. Yes, that is so good. And that's a powerful mindset shift that you just described there because Yeah, I think we've all been in positions where we think that there is only one right decision and it's scary. And so we're afraid of making a decision because of all the other decisions and the fear of failure. And then we get stuck and we really hold ourselves back. So really shifting into that mindset that 
you know what? I'm going to make the next best decision for me and kind of detach yourself from that outcome because we can always change. We, we really hold ourselves back because we get stuck. We think that that one decision is the end all be all. That's right. And, you know, as moms, we have little ones. We are responsible for other people. And sometimes when the decision comes to ourselves, you know what? We're pretty confident making a decision for ourselves. But when it comes to impacting other people and the people we're responsible for, the people we love and the people we're concerned about, uh, shaping and growing and influencing, wow, suddenly the stakes are so much higher. And what we need to remember is humans are resilient. We bounce back. And in fact, one thing to remember about our children and our families and our businesses is that the resilience doesn't go away. In fact, it can increase. You can become more agile. You can become more nimble. The little people you're responsible for can also increase those skills, the agility and the resilience. And to be able to demonstrate to our teammates and our employees and our families that, hey, we move forward. And if we need to course correct, you know what? We totally can. And watch us do it and we'll do it well. And so that's a beautiful example. And it's something that we can all practice in our lives. Yes. And I love how you just said practice because it's not a one and done type thing. It's not that you make a big decision and you're like, okay, the world is, you know, full of rainbows and butterflies and everything's fine. No, because this is a practice, but you touched upon too, just the resilience of humans. And we are, we are so incredibly resilient, even when we don't realize it. But yeah, I love the saying that, you know, you've survived everything in life up until this point. And that's true. We are so resilient. You figure it out, you get through it, no matter if that decision you made worked out for the best, whether it didn't work out. And guess what? You learned something from it. And that resilience is powerful. Right. And one thing that I like to dig in deeper with my clients is if they are feeling the fear and the anxiety about making the quote wrong decision or the impact that their decision might make might have on people that they love and their families and their businesses, there's a lot of unpacking there to do about that fear. Fear of what exactly? And, you know, being a coach and working with people in general, it's a fascinating process that you learn that other people's thought processes are not your own. And why I might be afraid of something is a completely different reason for somebody else to be afraid of the same thing. And it may not even be fear. Right? The, the anxiety may stem from lots of different emotions and lots of different thoughts and beliefs about yourself and your situation. And so it's so important in that resilience to become practiced at unpacking that for yourself and knowing where those emotions are stemming from, separate from the pressure to actually make the decision. Right? So you can do that self-analysis or work with a coach to understand where there's those pressures and motivations are separate from mat- making the actual decision because those those two things can be separated and work through independently. Yeah, that's really great advice because when you start to unpack the emotions, the fear, the anxiety, the worry, you do make it a lot less scary. You figure out, okay, what's the real reason behind this? And it may be something totally different than you originally thought. So for those listeners that are managing these big emotions and feel a lot of emotions, how do you start to separate the emotion from the decision-making process? I think sometimes we let our emotions lead instead of like the facts and what actually is the decision that we need to make. Right. It's such a good point because a lot of times people are trying to make a very analytical, unemotional decision. 
here's the thing we're humans yeah <laughs> we can't operate without emotion you know and so it just recognize and understand and embrace that every emotion is driven by some every decision is driven by some sort of emotion now our emotions are driven by our thoughts and beliefs about our situation and what this decision means and what's going to happen and so the more you can unpack those thoughts and beliefs that generate the emotions that you're feeling the more you can understand yourself the more you feel rational not unemotional just have a greater understanding of the drivers. And a lot uh, is written out there about making the actual decision. Some people use pro-con lists. Some people use weighted averages and Excel sp spreadsheets and all the things, right? But a lot of times what I find is that people know on paper, let's say, what the quote right decision is and what they want to be able to do, but they're held back by emotional craziness on the inside. Yeah. And so it's resolving that independent of what, you know, picking A or B um, that will really help. Now, the other thing that I always like to point out to people is sometimes there's so much pressure about a decision because you feel like you have a fixed number of options. And a lot of times what happens is when you unpack all of those thoughts and beliefs and understand where the emotion is coming from, what a lot of my clients discover is, oh, wait, maybe there's another option that I can put on the table for myself and for my family and for my business that works for me. There may be, you know, two decisions presented to you on the table. You can pick a decision, you can choose option number one or option number two. And a lot of times clients going through this process realize I'm going to put option number three on the table for myself. And that's what I'm going to go with. I absolutely love that because I think we for, uh, so often forget that. And yes. then we just overanalyze and we get stuck in that analysis paralysis mode. So for that mom that is just spinning her wheels in place, knows that she needs to make a decision, but is just stuck in analysis paralysis, what advice can you give her to start gaining traction to get out of that? You know, whether it's talking to a trusted friend or spouse or colleague or even journaling on your own, go ahead and put on paper what the emotions are that you're feeling around this. Because as we talked about earlier, so many people are trying to push down or avoid emotion in a decision. <laughs> I say, let's dive headlong into it. Go ahead and articulate what those emotions are. What are the thoughts and the beliefs that you have about yourself and your situation that are generating those emotions? And let's look at that. Be an observer of yourself, unpack that. And a lot of times just that process relieves people of a lot of burden and anxiety. They can look at that and they can say, okay, now I realize that's probably not something I need to worry about. That's extremely unlikely. Or, wow, I am really worried about that. I should go talk to my husband about this and let's, let's do some problem solving before we make the decision. So that is always what I recommend. Instead of avoiding and tampering down on the emotion, go ahead, let's take a, a peek, open up that box, write down or tell somebody what the emotions are why you believe what you believe, and then you can go from there. Oh, that is such great advice because you're right. So often we do try and just push it down. We avoid it. And that's probably one of the worst things we can do because then it's just going to continue to grow. And all of those million thoughts that are already bouncing around in our heads, that's just going to cause that anxiety and that frustration and that burden to continue to grow. 
That's right. And, you know, when people find themselves in a spiral of indecision and all of that, people label uncertainty. Yeah. Right. When really what it is, it might be fear. It might be concern. It might be, gosh, you know, if I do what I really want to do, other people are going to judge me or laugh at me or think I'm crazy, or I might lose the respect of, I mean, whatever it might be. Um, that's not uncertainty. <laughs> it, uncertainty comes from not managing those emotions, not working through them. And then you are in no man's land and you yeah. continue to be in no man's land. And then we label it uncertainty. Exactly. That is so, so true. So what you're telling us is, you know, harness those emotions, lean into them, get curious about them. And that's where you can start to unpack them and really create some positive change. Yeah, absolutely. So this isn't as complicated as we're all making it out to be. <laughs> the process is probably not as complicated, but going through it can be tricky, right? It, it can be scary. It can bring up a lot of emotions. And I think a lot of times we're afraid to feel those emotions because they they may not always be happy emotions. They may be hard to work through, but working through those really does harness our power. A hundred percent. And so much of this is wrapped up in identity, yeah. who we believe we are or who we want to be as a mompreneur and juggling these different roles. Um, we want to be that vision of ourselves that we don't allow ourselves to feel the things that we're feeling and really evaluate those things, look at look at those things critically and see, is there anything I can learn from this? Is there anything in there, in the, that crazy ball of emotions that might actually help me? Um, that is not typically, you know, how people say we ought to do things, right? That's not the typical process. Right. But as women, I feel like we do have that ability, that innate ability within us. We have this superpower. And I think it is hard when our identities do shift so much as you become a spouse, as you become a mother, as you become all of these different roles. It can be hard to navigate that, but you really do need to take the time to dive into it unpack it, see what's happening in there and use that to grow, to learn, to teach you those lessons and propel you forward. 100%. And as you mentioned earlier, this concept of it being a practice, the more we explore our emotions and the beliefs that we have that are generating those emotions. Um, I've had clients who have gone from really an arduous process to unpack all of that and to even get comfortable with the whole process because they're in business mode and they're in mom mode and they're in yeah. wife mode and they're in team leader mode. And oh my goodness, to be able to sit with yourself and your emotions, that's such a hard, hard thing to do if you're not used to it. Yeah. I've had those types of clients go from that being so hard to in the in the middle of having to make a pretty high stakes decision they can comfortably in the moment say i am feeling this emotion it's stemming from this thought that thought is not going to help me right here it's actually not valid and in 30 seconds can help resolve all the emotional tum tumultuous craziness and get to a decision quicker because they just become a little bit more practiced at it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I, I'm even thinking, you know, with our children, teaching yes. them these skills, if we're demonstrating these skills and empowering our children with these skill sets, think of what an amazing generation and impact we'll be having on this world. Like that is so incredible. And what you might be surprised about is how capable the children are yeah of doing. to be able to name emotions you know using the colorful emotion wheel that gets 
you know, more sophisticated than sad, mad, glad, right? And getting them to point to the words that they're feeling. And when I asked my daughter, even when she was younger, uh, that's interesting. What are you making it mean? You know, what are you making it mean? She completely, I mean, I've had adults that take five sessions to get to this point. And she very matter of fact says, I make it mean that the teacher thinks I'm stupid or whatever it might've been, right? Right. And they are so attuned and they are so capable. And these skills have benefits way b- beyond us as individuals. Oh my so gosh. True. Absolutely incredible work you are doing, Nicole. How can we learn more about you and get into your world? Well, you can go to aureliancoaching.com. That's my company. Um, And uh, any of the packages there, people can check it out, see what might work for you. I have an introductory package. It's only four sessions. If people are sort of thinking about it, but they don't want to commit too much, they want to check out what the coaching is about. And then I have a larger uh, three-month a deep dive decision-making program. And so all of my programs um, on this podcast, if you go to the website and you'd like to sign up, you can have a 20% discount with the coupon code WISE, W-I-S-E. And uh, yeah, I, I love it. It's my passion. I love to help people sort through these things and uh, see the progress and transformation they can make in their businesses and in their families. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for your generosity, Nicole. We really do appreciate you sharing that coupon code and just your knowledge and the value of what you do is absolutely incredible and will benefit so many. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed talking with you as always. All right. And until next time, mamas, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 